Hey, I'm Keith, and welcome back to For the Tech of It. So as we close out uh, the year 2021, uh, a lot of you are probably in the market right now for purchasing some type of media streaming device, uh, whether it's for yourself and the family, or you're looking to buy one uh, as a gift for someone. Well, I wanted to walk you through my three favorite uh, media streaming devices. Those are the Roku, the Chromecast with Google TV, and the Amazon Fire TV. And I'm going to take a slightly different approach to this uh, review. What I did was I put together a questionnaire, and I had my members of my family go through and review each of these three devices uh, separately. And the vast majority of them are fam most familiar with the Roku, uh, as opposed to the Chromecast with Google TV or even the Amazon Fire TV. So this should be a pretty interesting review. I think you'll like the outcome here. So let's get started. Hey, welcome back. So I wanted to open this episode by going through some of the current prices that I found uh, online for these three devices. So the Amazon uh, Fire Stick 4K, which is what we reviewed, what we're reviewing here, uh, is currently going for $24.99, that's US. Uh, the Amazon Fire Stick HD uh, is $19.99, so it's a really good deal for both. The Chromecast with Google TV 4K, which we also reviewed, is $39.99, and that's on Google's website. Uh, the Chromecast HD is $19.99. And of course, the Roku Streaming Stick 4K is $29.99, and the Roku Express HD is $19.99. Now, by all means, you'll definitely want to shop around, look for prices uh, online, maybe go to some of your local uh, retail outlets and see if you can find better pricing there, especially now since it's the holiday season. You should be able to find really good competitive prices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through uh, what I did in terms of uh, having my family review these devices. Now, I created a questionnaire, a very basic questionnaire that had 10 questions on it. And I set up a 1 to 10 ranking, as you see here in the upper right. So where 1 is poor and 10 is excellent. And essentially, the, uh, the 10 questions are really based on how my family uh, liked the home screen of each one of these devices, the overall look and feel, how well the devices perform, uh, voice navigation, because all of them have a voice remote, uh, remote control navigation, so the remote control that comes with the devices, uh, how well is, you know, does that work, or how well do they think it worked, uh, the availability of content, which is really important, um, value for the price. These are the prices that you see here. And would they recommend these devices for family and friends? Um, the overall build quality, ease of use, and the features included with the remote controls. So I'm going to get out of the way and continue forward here with this episode, and I'm going to show you what the results were. Okay, so let's start with the Amazon Fire TV Stick. Now, as you can see here, I've got in my table uh, over to the right, I've got the categories broken out into the 10 different uh, questions, essentially, uh, that were a part of my questionnaire. And just to the right of that is the average ranking. Now, the way I did the average ranking, I had four members of my family review each of the three devices uh, using this questionnaire. I went through each one of the questions, totaled up the score for all four, and averaged it out. Then at the bottom of uh, each table, and you'll see it for each one of these devices, I took all of these average rankings and averaged it again to give you an overall average scoring uh, for the device. And we'll see at the end here how the three devices stack up to one another. All right, I also asked them to provide a bit of commentary on some of the uh, features here, or some of the categories rather. And it's pretty interesting. So if you look at the a home screen look and feel. I'm going to read you what some of the common feedback was here. So 
And again, I don't know which member of my family did this. I wanted this to really be a blind survey. So I did not ask them to include their names. All right, so the comments were, the screen is typically a bit too busy. There are advertisements uh, that take up a large portion of the top of the screen. Um, too many places to click at once and it's not very easy to navigate. So that was on, on the low side. On the high side, um, it says when you hover over a channel, you know, it shows, yeah, it shows you what media or what information is popular and it also has pretty good recommendations. So that's for the Amazon Fire uh, Stick uh, 4K. If we look at overall performance, overall performance is a seven. Uh, voice navigation, that's an important one, using the voice remote is an eight. So you have Amazon Alexa, of course, uh, with the Amazon Fire Stick. Now, what's also interesting to note is the Amazon Fire TV Stick is really, a, in my view, a very good device especially if you're an Amazon Prime member. Because with Amazon Prime, uh, with an Amazon Prime membership, you also get the Amazon Prime video. And it's, Amazon Prime is pretty much front, and, the video is pretty much front and center with this device. Although there's plenty of content that you can load onto this device from the Amazon App Store, essentially that has nothing to do with Prime. So there's a YouTube channel, there's an Apple TV channel, um, there's um, a Tableau, and I talked about that in, my, uh, in my, my previous video where I was talking about cord cutting. So Tableau makes a, an app for the Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, so if we look at the value for price, that got a really high score of a nine. And I can tell you now, that in terms of value for price, the Amazon Fire TV Stick scored higher than the other than, than the other two devices. Would they recommend it to family and friends? It gets an eight, very good score. Overall build quality, that's an eight. And let's see, I think there was some commentary on the build quality. Let me look that up here. Um, yeah, here we go. So. The remote, although is a bit small and feels slightly fragile, the device overall is very well put together. Um, it's a good bang for your buck, and you can add apps and use it, use its built-in browser, and that's really good. Um, let's see what else we have here. Ah, you can look for movies and content based on the actors um, in your favorite shows and movies. And it has quite a bit of metadata that you can pull up on the different TV shows and movies uh, if you want to find out more information about that particular content. So the overall average score here, I gave it, I, I didn't give it, but it, it comes out to calculate out to be an eight. Now in the photo that you see here on the right, it's a picture I took of the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K's remote control. And at the bottom of the remote, you'll see that there are four shortcut buttons. One is to Prime Video, one is to Netflix, one is to Hulu, and one goes to Disney Plus. So if you subscribe to any of these services and you want to quickly navigate uh, to that service, just click one of those buttons and it takes you directly there. Okay, next up, the Chromecast with Google TV. Again, this is the 4K version of the device. Um, if we look at the categories here, home screen look and feel got a seven. The highest score for this device was voice navigation. It has the Google Voice service uh, capability built into it. The lowest ranking I think was remote control navigation. And let me see what the feedback was here. Uh, here we go. So with respect to remote control, I, I don't, the feedback was I don't really like the layout and it's oversimplified. Uh, another comment was, let's see if I can pull that up. Yeah, here we go. Um, so the remote control uh, is quite small. 
It doesn't seem to have a play rewind capability, only offers two options. Uh, for opening two different channels, and I'll show you that in a moment here on the remote. Um, but that was the general feedback. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, include remote. So the device is not geared to to the tech uh, to the technology novice. Not necessarily user friendly with limited buttons and labels. All right, so value for price is seven. As you can see here, build quality, seven. Would you recommend a family and friends, seven. But ease of use got an eight. And again, the remote control navigation and features are really what hurt the device here. But overall, the average score is a seven. All right, so I also took a photo of the uh, Chromecast with Google TV uh, 4K's remote. And as you can see, there are uh, two shortcut buttons at the bottom, one for Netflix and one for YouTube. The reviewers generally preferred the Amazon Fire TV's remote as well as the Roku's remote because it has uh, twice as many dedicated channels. Now, in terms of the feedback uh, one of the reviewers gave on the inability to uh, you know, pause, rewind, fast forward, you can actually do that with this remote. It's just somewhat unclear because if you look at the top of the remote, uh, that circular um, button at the top there, if you press to the left side of it or to the right side of it, that actually gives you the fast forward and rewind capability. Uh, if you press the button in the middle uh, at the top there, that's also the pause and play. I think it would do Google some good to maybe uh, add uh, some images uh, to that particular uh, control at the top there to, to provide some type of visual indication to new users, because again, my family, they've never actually used uh, this device before, to give an indication to new users that, hey, this is how you want to navigate back and forth and pause and play things using this remote control. Okay, and finally, uh, this is the Roku Streaming Stick 4K. Let's take a look at what some of the feedback was here for home screen look and feel. Um, it ranked as high as a 9 and as low as a 6.5. So for, but what's interesting for all four reviewers, even the one that gave it a 6.5, they all were consistent in stating that this is a good uh, experience for people who simply don't like technology. They want something very simple. Um, it's very appealing. It has a very easy layout. You know, scrolling up and down, up and down is, is a, a, bit, a bit better for a lot of people. You can easily reorganize and prioritize those channels that you want to see in whatever order you want to see them. You know, it has a basic grid layout. Um, let's see here. What's some of the, uh, yeah, easy to use, easy. To, so they were all consistent with respect to the ease of use with the Roku streaming stick. And I can concur with that. For the lowest score, which was uh, 6.5, um, the reviewer stated that it's a little too simple and kind of boring. But other than that, in terms of the overall home screen look and feel and navigation capability, the Roku generally scored pretty well. Uh, actually, it scored, it's, yeah, it scored pretty well. Uh, overall performance was seven. Voice navigation was seven. Um, remote control, of course, is an eight. Uh, value for price is an eight. Overall build quality, it got eights all around. I'm looking at this now. Pretty consistent with eights here. Ease of use obviously is a nine and remote control features. Let me see if I can find any commentary on that. Remote control features. I think that was number five here. Okay. Um, comments such as average, uh, standard, easy to use for non-tech savvy people. Uh, remote control offers a good layout, offers basic control, play, pause, volume, etc. 
easy to use. Yeah, so that uh, the overall average score of that was given for the Roku calculated out to be an eight. Okay, I also took a photo of my Roku remote. Again, I've been using Roku's for years now. And if you, you know, look at the bottom of this remote, now this is, um, this particular remote is called the Roku Voice Remote Pro. Um, what's interesting, if you go to Roku's website, Roku has different remote controls that you can get with the streaming stick. Now, the streaming stick that I have, uh, that I purchased, uh, does have uh, an advanced remote, except with respect to the remote that you're seeing right here, this remote, and this is unique to Roku, this remote not only has, you know, volume controls, uh, as well as you can control the TV just as you can with the Amazon Fire TV Sticks remote and the, the Chromecast or Google TV's remote, but this uh, Voice Remote Pro also has a headphone jack on the side. So if you want to, um, perhaps, let's say you're in bed and your spouse is trying to sleep and you don't want to bother your spouse, you can plug a set of headphones into this remote control and you can listen to um, whatever it is you're watching on TV via headphones. So that's why I went out and I actually purchased this remote uh, directly from Roku. It's called the Voice Remote Pro. By default, the remote that you get uh, with the streaming stick does not include the headphone jack. But if you, again, if you look at the bottom of this remote, there are actually one, two, three, four, six buttons here at the bottom. Um, two of them that are numbered uh, buttons one and two. And then the four buttons, the shortcut buttons, one is Netflix, the other is Disney Plus. Uh, one is Apple TV, so there's an Apple TV app for this. Um, a Hulu button. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention earlier that for the Chromecast with Google TV, there's also an Apple TV app for that, as well as the Amazon Fire TV. But the, the buttons that are labeled one and two, these buttons are buttons that you can further customize yourself. So think of it instead of just four shortcut buttons, you now have six with this Roku uh, Voice Remote Pro. So you can customize those two buttons to open up two additional channels of your choosing that's available to you on your Roku. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's a very good remote. Um, if it's something you're interested in, you need to purchase it separately. I think I paid, I think it was like $29.99 on Roku's website, uh, but you may be able to find a better deal elsewhere. And it's called the Roku Voice Remote Pro. Okay, so finally we have a summary view here, ranking all three devices relative to one another. The numbers that I have highlighted in blue here are indicators of where each of the devices had the highest score. So if we look at those right quick, starting with the Amazon Fire TV, the overall value for price is its highest ranking. It beat out both the Roku and the Chromecast uh, with Google TV. On the, let's see, remote control navigation, the Roku scored the best here. It's a, whereas the Fire TV is a six, the Chromecast is a five. Uh, ease of use, the Roku really outshined the competition there as well. But overall, if you look at the overall average scores, whereas in the, the previous examples, I just rounded the numbers off. I, I didn't put any decimals. I wanted to do that here to show you um, essentially which one edged out the other ever so slightly. And if you look at it here, the uh, Roku just ever so slightly edged out the Fire TV, where the Fire TV's average ranking uh, overall score was a 7 point, is a 7.5. The Roku comes in at a 7.7. .7. And the Chromecast right behind that at a 7. So overall, my recommendation is that these three devices, really it's up to your own personal taste. I just wanted to kind of remove myself from the review itself and let others who haven't used uh, these devices, other than maybe the Roku, um, to, to do the rankings and, and 
go through and review these products uh, for all of you to give you some guidance and feedback as to what they thought about it. So hopefully this helps. Um, if you're interested in seeing more reviews like this, by all means, let me know. And also definitely hit that subscribe and that like button if you, if you like the content that you see here, because I'm interested in making more content like this. So here's the website for the tech of it.net. Uh, I've been working on it for quite some time and it's shaping up nicely. I definitely wanted to share that with each of you. Um, I'll include the link to it in the show notes. And I'll also include links in the show notes to um, the sites where you can find the three different devices that we reviewed today, as well as some other helpful information or useful information for you. But by all means, come check us out here on the web. Um, you can reach us uh, just by scrolling down to the bottom of the page and hitting contact us and, and filling out the form. Um, you can learn more about For the Tech of It, how we got started, what it is we're doing, and just provide us with whatever feedback that you, you, know, you think um, would help us to improve uh, the quality of the content that we're providing here. So the site's very easy to navigate. Uh, I have a complete list of OS alternatives here that you can scroll through. Um, there are videos. All of my videos are here. Uh, I post them and keep them updated. In fact, I'll be adding this video to the site shortly. Um, I have my blog posts, other resources that you may be interested in, including uh, some of the podcasts that I subscribe to. You may find those interesting as well. Uh, I have uh, different websites that show you where to go to find free software, free and open source software on the internet, uh, as well as a number of different PC vendors here who actually have computers that come preloaded or pre-installed with Linux and they're fully supported. So I encourage you to come check us out here on the website at forthetechofit.net. And it was exciting seeing you here uh, joining with me today. And uh, have a happy new year if you don't see me again until after then. Bye-bye.